Hi folks, welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch. Well, one thing that this whole Pride Month uh, I suspected, and I know that many of you have suspected, was doing was to really kind of push our side, the, 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 the conservative right, to kind of push us into a corner, to, to kind of get us out in the open, expose the hatred, expose how, how bigoted we are. Uh, and to potentially push uh, one side into the other and cause some kind of conflict. But I think that there's another thing that could be going on, and that's just an exposing how much hatred there is because of all of the uh, diversity. Oh, I love all of these, these progressive words now, uh, all this diversity out there. And I think we're starting to see that. We are seeing attacks on speech more so than we've probably ever seen before. We've seen uh, government regulations and people being arrested, um, all kinds of stuff happening on free speech. And, and eventually, um, we're going to probably start seeing more official regulation when it comes to speech. Um, it just this morning, I saw that the UN Secretary uh, General has proposed an international compact to combat hate speech, this dangerous, deadly hate speech. You know, if you don't, if you don't, uh, you know, call someone by their preferred pronouns, well, then you're, you're hate speech. Um, I saw that, I believe it was Ireland, uh, was proposing a law that actually criminalized someone, uh, punished them criminally if they uh, didn't use the preferred pronouns. It may not have been Ireland, I think it was, so don't hold me to that one, but I did see that uh, someone was, was proposing that. Uh, we've seen states here in the United States, um, New Mexico just passed a law. Um, I think uh, one of the, either in Oregon or, or Washington, that um, the, the parents can actually lose their child, meaning CPS can come in and remove the child uh, because they don't use the preferred pronouns. Uh, there was a case up in uh, Washington State where someone was trying to adopt a child and they did not agree, even though the child was an infant, they did not agree that uh, if the child grew up and had its own preferred pronouns that you would, you would recognize that and call them with that. And so they said, no, they wouldn't do that and they were denied an adoption. We are seeing more and more um, attack on the freedom of speech. And as much as myself and many of you just love our guns, you know, we cling to our guns and our Bibles, right? Um, and, and we complain about the attacks on the Second Amendment. Uh, I think an argument could be made that right now there's more overt attacks on freedom of speech than there is just about anything. And, and as much as, again, we want to say, our freedom uh, is protected and, and we have it because we have guns. And I'm not arguing that point, but freedom of speech is just as important. If we, if we cannot speak freely and speak the truth, that's the thing. It's not that people are saying things that are awful. It's the vast majority of these, uh, they're speaking the truth. And it's part of this, like I've been pushing this, this <laughs> idea is a destruction of the West. And, and this, this idea that there is certain truths, these truths are based in biblical principles. Uh, and, and we've got to destroy that because they're, they're presenting us new truths, right? These, these new truths that um, completely uh, contradict everything that has always been traditional, everything that's been uh, of moral of value, everything that's been of, of biblical worldview. And they've got to destroy that. And so we are seeing more and more of that. Just a, a week or so ago, uh, there was a guy, yeah, he went to one of these pride fest type things. It's out in public, okay? It's on a city street. It's a, like a parade type thing. He's standing on the other side of the street on a sidewalk, okay, in a very public area, and he is quoting the Bible, um, <clears throat> trying to, to preach, I guess, at these, at these people that are participating in the Pride Parade. I'm not saying that that's the best way to, to minister to these people um, or, or to anyone, but the fact is, is that he was doing it, and he wasn't causing anyone harm other than he was reading the Bible, and, and he was arrested. Um, that you can clearly see that. Uh, th there's been lots of, of things said from the White House, from the press secretary, uh, using terminology that it's dangerous 
that it's actually that it's physically dangerous uh, to to not acknowledge someone's uh, gender uh, or or to you know not acknowledge their pronouns. Uh, there was a a video clip going around for a while, and it happened several months back, and it was a it was at the Senate uh, at a Senate hearing, and it was uh, Senator Josh Hawley. And then some uh, professor, I believe, from like Berkeley or something like that. And she actually accused him because he does not acknowledge people's pronouns or that they can choose their gender. And he, she, you know, I'm not, I'm not quoting her directly, but she said something to the effect that, you know, you are threatening people's lives. That you, you, you know, what you're doing by not acknowledging their pronouns is, is causing violence against people that have various genders and pronouns and crazy weird identities and stuff like that you know we're seeing a a, a very dangerous movement uh this this whole un thing if that gets going and i don't doubt that it would uh it wouldn't be any much different than the the world health organization pact uh treaty that that biden agreed to that uh, well we won't go into that because youtube doesn't like that kind of stuff but you know what i'm talking about uh, where the World Health Organization can kind of come in and take control when the next <laughs> comes around. Um, the, the free speech thing, it's, it's dying. It's absolutely dying. And it's dying under the guise of, well, we've got to protect these people. We've got to protect them. And so they've spun the narrative for a while that your words are violence, that words are hate, this whole thing of hate speech. What, what in the world is hate speech? Because you say something that you don't like about someone, even if it is out of hatred, how is that violence? I mean, feelings can hurt, but I don't think the government is there to protect our feelings. They're there to protect and ensure that freedoms are, are, are still in place, that people have individual freedoms. I mean, if, if, you, if you want to make the most simplest argument, our founders, when they created this, this government and the Constitution, uh, the, the whole sole purpose of it was to enshrine uh, personal freedoms, to make sure that they are protected. And that's really, in the end, what the government's job is, is to work for us, protect our, our freedoms. Um, and of course, that's not happening anymore. We are going down a very, very dangerous path with this. Um, and and it, we've been going down this path for a while. This isn't something new. I'm not bringing you new information. I'm just telling you that the that the path we're going down, it, it's advancing. It's picking up speed. Um, and I don't think we're too much longer before we see some type of international agreement, treaty or whatever, when it comes to hate speech. And the very things that you say right now online, the things that you say in person, uh, when you go to any kind of public meeting, a school, church, anything like that could be looked upon as a criminal form of speech. Uh, how, how many churches would, would either have to A, shut their doors, or B, water down their message to the point that it, it's not at all in line with, with biblical truths? Uh, because the Bible is hate speech. That's it to, to in their mind. There's been reports of the Bible being removed uh, out of libraries because of the the level of violence and hate speech that it, that's in the Bible. Um, even though it's truth, you know, truth hurts sometimes. That's, you know, something I say often. I know, truth hurts. It, it, it's, you know... But we, we're living in this, this soft world anymore. We would talk about that all the time on here, of how that's one of our greatest problems and, and that will be lead to our fall uh, as a civilization is that we've become so ultra, ultra soft that, you know, if something just, it doesn't agree with us, well, then, you know, it's, it's painful, it's, it's bad. Uh, the, the, the left is pushing this, this, this thing that they call tolerance. <laughs> inclusivity, except it's only tolerance for them. You know that. This isn't anything new to you. The point that I'm getting to all this is not to tell you something you already know, is to tell you that we're, we're headed down a very, very dangerous path here, where we're seeing uh, our, our, our books, the Bible, removed out of libraries, when we're seeing people quoting and preaching that on the sidewalk, arrested and removed, when we're seeing parents have children taking from them uh, because they are, you know, being a parent based on biblical principles, we're seeing a very dangerous path 
uh, that we're headed. And I, I personally believe that we're headed down that path very quickly. Uh, they're, they're changing the words and the meanings of everything, and that's exactly what the left does. Uh, the, the president and the whole White House is pushing this idea that all of your children actually belong to them. I mean, I'm sure Biden would love that, all the sniffing and stuff that he does. But they're pushing this narrative that, that your children aren't yours. They're the community's children. It's, it's this communal, communistic children. Hmm. Wonder where they're getting these ideas from, because they're certainly not coming from uh, patriot, liberty, biblical-based uh, uh, people. They're coming from folks like, well, yes, Karl Marx and Lenin and, and, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, this is right out of those, those uh, playbooks. And as much as it turns our stomach and we can't stand to hear it, and we know it's wrong and we know it's bad, we need to realize that it's actually very, very dangerous. Uh, in fact, our founding fathers, uh, the, the very central thing that, that they focused on when, when they were creating this nation was the freedom of speech. The, the freedom of firearms was, was really in a lot of ways secret, secondary. It was to protect those freedoms of speech, but the freedom to speak out was very central and integral in keeping the nation free. And we are watching that be destroyed every day, every day. Uh, how many people have we heard uh, that, that's been arrested simply because they spoke out? Uh, look at the guy, that, the head of the Oath Keepers. He didn't enter the Capitol building. He committed no crimes whatsoever, but yet he was sentenced to 18 years in prison because of the things that he said. Uh, we're seeing that over and over and over again. Uh, and and we, we need to take notice of this. Like I said, as many of us that are so pro-gun that that's where our big focus is on what the government is doing to take them away, we should also be worried and focused on the government taking away our ability to speak the truth, to speak out against them and speak the truth. Because as that erodes and is taken away, we are watching our nation no longer be free. We can no longer be calling this a free nation. We can no longer be saying that, that we have all, all this freedom and stuff and we're the best and the freest and all that kind of stuff. Because if they're gonna be arresting people on public sidewalks for, for preaching the word, or if they're gonna be taking your child away from you because you don't give it a chosen gender name or something like that, then we can no longer say that we live in a free country. Uh, and, and if that's the case, then we can either, or do both, uh, start preparing to live outside of that system, to completely set up something new. Uh, and it doesn't mean that it's, it's, it's that dramatic. It just means that you and your family choose to not participate as much as possible, because I know you can't do everything. I hear that all the time. To participate as much as possible and as little as you can. Uh, build community around you, and then also prepare. Prepare for the day that there may become a fight for this freedom. Uh, there may be a fight to gain it back. Or if, the, if nothing else, just learn to live outside of it so that you're not sucked into it and consumed by the collapsing empire at hand. Folks, it's time to get your houses in order and to prepare yourselves mentally, physically, and spiritually. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.